the webinar um, I'm going to talk to you today about one of the most inspiring literatures in homeopathy that I want to tell all of you that you should be going through and I'm going to talk to you about a biography of a very very inspiring homeopath Dr. E. A. Farrington and much before the idea of kingdom, mayasm, everything came up. The idea of plant kingdom, animal kingdom and differentiations came up in this century. Farrington in 1800 wrote about it and his book The Clinical Materia Medica is a super materia medica where he has done a lot of research. So let's talk about Farrington, the person. Um, he was born in New York and uh, educated in Philadelphia and he was very very intellectual right from the beginning of his life it was during this time that Farrington kind of got especially percepted by his brother that is H.W. Farrington and he got involved into Pennsylvania Homeopathic Medical College at this moment, um, he joined the American Institute in 1872 and he became a professor of Materia Medica in 1874, uh, filling the vacancy by the great Guernsey from the Guernsey keynote. Materia Medica was his love. Like me, Materia Medica is my first love. My second love is repertory. Third love, I can't tell you right now. But Materia Medica was his love. For him, his father was Herring. Because Herring would often say that when I am gone, Farrington will finish my Materia Medica and take my understanding to next level. And he did a lot of work in Cyclopedia of Drug Pathogenesis. And he was a very debatable person. He had a lot of debatable thoughts about homeopathy, laws, potency. He was very innovative. He did a lot of interesting newer provings and provings of older drugs and his main 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 love was understanding of relationship of remedies and he worked a lot on journals American Journal North American Journal of Homeopathy um, it is said it's right written about him that um, his writing all bear impress of a mastermind already in 1871 Three years subsequent to his graduation, we find him dealing with philosophical elucidation of drug prescribing in language indicating depth of knowledge, rarely found even among the oldest of practitioners. He was like a young progeny. And his, his, his best work is Clinical Materia Medica. And like most great people, his real greatness was known after his death. Well, in 1884, he, he developed acute laryngitis. Although even in his laryngitis and acute pain, he continued in lecture. He would keep teaching. Later, he developed bronchitis. And um, he tried his best, but at, at some point, he, he kind of um, was no more. But the best books, and I want to tell you, is Clinical Materia Medica, Comparative Materia Medica. Lesser Writing is also an interesting book therapeutic hints where he's spoken about different occipital pain of different remedies very interesting well this is a classic lectures on clinical materia medica he has written a lot about what is the main idea of every remedy and what are the functional symptoms that increase decrease and how do we understand the provings as well he's done a lot of comparison he's worked a lot on animal remedies Carbon remedies like carbo animalis he's worked on. Halogens, for example, he would say halogen have action on larynx. Carbon have action on glands. This is all started by Farrington. Just to give you a few important things from lesser writings. He's written here. It is not so that our first duty is to our patient. Our first duty is to truth, which when look loyally served, best enables us to do greatest good to the soul. And 
I want to give you a few examples of how we analyze. This is a case of atonia of uterus with retroflexion of uterus. And um, during the pregnancy, there was impending abortion. In the examination, retroflexion was seen. So at this point, there was a lot of hemorrhage that came up after the putration. Many remedies were given, pulsatilla, colophylum, but later on, post the delivery, hemorrhage after delivery and China was given with amazing result. Interesting. Later on, the after pains remain, which were very, very exhausting. You could see after pains remaining exhausting. You could see their colophylum. Later on, Naxomica was given. So, his idea of giving different, different remedies at different stages is also quite interesting. There was a very interesting symptom where the eyeball pain is, is especially was sore and slightest attempt to look here and there. The slightest motion would cause the pain increase and you could see the remedy given was Paris quadrifolia. It had a very interesting symptom, pulling string inside. Paris quadrifolia with a remarkable change. Some more cases I want to tell you how he analyzed. One of the cases, this was a case of headache, very famous case of Farrington. And the only symptom was the headache would get better by looking sideways. There's only one, majorly one remedy. The other remedy is China Sun. He gave the remedy Oleander. You can see the rubric here. See the way he would analyze. It is not calcarea, pulsatilla, sulfur in all cases that these masters did. Another case, exhausting drowsiness, even while sitting, walking. No other symptom was there. And they had tried all medicines. He gave Nux Moscata at a lower potency with totally cured. So this is the idea about Farrington. This was my idea to share about this great man. So write to me about what you think about him. I want you to read his books and um, write to me about it.